Welcome to The Outliers Inn, produced by the Operational Excellence Society and sponsored by Zonotech Consulting Group International, with your hosts, Joseph Paris and David Schneider. Well, hey there, you've come back to another session of The Outliers Inn. I'm Mule, and on the other side of the screen here is JP, who's actually on this side of the pond for, for this session. Yeah, for, for once. once. Yeah, I was able to make it, you know, it's been three months since um, I've been here in the States, and it's been four months since I got a haircut. So I, I got to tell you, I, I need one desperately. I'm going to get one next Friday, happy about that. But I got to tell you, um, this whole COVID thing and the rules and regulations, um, it just uh, it's just for caca, all right? You know, President Biden came out in January and said, for those people, everybody coming into the States by air, okay, only by air, has to have a COVID test. And it's got to be negative, of course. So, and it's got to be three days, within three days of your flying. So I get my COVID test in Frankfurt and uh, it comes back negative, no big deal. But I go to the airport at the United desk, the United check-in, and they ask me if I've had a COVID test and if it came back negative. And I said, yeah. And I start to pull out the paperwork and they're like, no, we don't want to see it. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, so I go through and I'm, I'm uh, going to uh, uh, towards the terminal or towards the, towards the gate. And there's another secondary security that I usually just blow by because I already have the sticker on my, my uh, uh, boarding pass. But this time I decide to stop and they're asking again. Did you have a COVID test and they come back negative? And I said, yeah, and they go to pull it out. And they're like, no, we don't want to see it. So, you know, here's this required COVID test that I took and nobody wants to see it. I get to the States. They don't want to see it. Uh, the, the guy asks, you know, what, what brings you honor back to system. the States? Yeah, it's, you're, you're completely on the honor system. And the guy asks, you know, um, what brought you back to the States? And I said, listen, I haven't had a haircut in three, three months. I got, I got to get a haircut. Um, but... When I land, when I land, I turn on my phone and it's, it's on fire. Okay. I don't mean like sparks and flames and heat and stuff like that, but I get this urgent, these urgent messages from one of my clients. They actually got infected by ransomware. It encrypted their, the entire system. Okay. They're, they're dead and there's panic. And, and this was not on my schedule. I mean, you know, ransomware was, this is not the reason I was coming back to the States. Um, but of course it consumed an enormous amount of time over the coming days. But the worst part is that, you know, we decided, you know, we could nuke the, the systems and restore from backup. His last valid backup is from November, 2019. Oh, God. Uh, right? oh. Yeah. I mean, this is no bueno, right? This is like, mm -hmm. this, is, this is, he's in the hurt locker. And, uh, you know, that caused, a lot of angst and believe it or not there's actually uh, a firm out there uh that or firms we he picked one that will actually negotiate on your behalf for a reduction in the ransomware that he has to pay so we had two parallel pack the paths that we're taking one is you know a forensic reconstruction uh based on the 2019 november backup that was restored and the second one was to see if we can't you know get the ransomware decryptor or you know and um and, and it's still a working process for both of them but can you imagine you know a getting infected by ransomware that'd be like a bad day right but worse would be to have no backup i mean you know it, and it makes me wonder you know how people cannot respect the lifeblood of their companies by better managing their IT infrastructure, being that's, more attentive. It's just totally absurd to not have the backup. Right. Um, you know, I, I've got a, I've got projects that I do that are uh, uh, are legal cases, and and uh, it's always fascinating to see. You know, oh yes, we have those backups. Yes, we have those backups, and then you find out, no, they don't. Or no, they only backed up some of the data, not all of the data. Uh, and so uh, it's, to me, it's amazing how stuff has slipped by. But then 
when you start looking at the root causes for it, there's uh, uh, because of the complexity of the systems, it's made it very difficult for companies to do automated backups and they can't afford to back up the entire freaking system. There's data that you do want to back up and then there's data perhaps you don't want to back up. And I know that it, uh, you know, in, in some of my clients, it, it took them quite some time to figure out how to automate that process. Right. Right. But, you know, I would be checking the logs to see if the, the famous backup was successful message is coming up you know, sure. or, or even periodically do a test of it to try to restore something. You know what I mean? Something inconsequential that, you know, you want to restore a document or, you know, maybe some pictures or whatever it is that you want to restore. Um, but to just, you know, like blind faith, uh, believe that the backup is working befuddled me. I don't trust mm -hmm. any technology that much. Yep. Well, you know, everybody has their Mount stupid to climb. Hopefully this one, uh, is the one that teaches your client a lesson, but yeah. uh, ouch. So uh, you got a haircut planned, right? I got a haircut planned for next Friday. Yay. There you go. Looking there you go. Yeah. Are you going to have some beer uh, between now and then? Uh, well, you know, funny as you, uh, you might mention that because uh, our, one of our guests I had a beer with last night and uh, he's actually got a, uh, quite a portfolio on tap. Uh, so why don't we have him uh, share uh, his experiences with us and what he's got going on. So, Don, you there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, I think we had more than a beer last night, Joe. <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah, it was a little bit, uh, uh, yeah, more than one beer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yesterday well, was a good day, and I felt like celebrating, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we've got uh, we got quite the collection on tap right now. Uh, we, we have a uh, elderberry wheat, uh, one of our IPAs. Well, we actually got two IPAs on tap. We got a New England, and we have another standard IPA on tap. And then we have um, I did uh, oatmeal stout, uh, a porter, and a brown ale. And then what's the other one we have? We have a a Hellas. Uh, Munich with uh, that's been my son infused. Uh, what is it? Rose? Rose. Rose. Yeah. That's actually pretty yeah. good. Rose flavor. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a nice, nice beer, nice crisp, kind of nice, real nice flavor to it. He did a real good job of uh, uh, blending that stuff in. That, that was a nice beer. That was nice. But uh, we're, we're ramping up capacity right now. We got another, we got another homebrew system that we just got. I just got the burners for it last night. So um, we're going to be now, instead of doing, we can do two beers at once quite easily. You know, it's, you still got a lot of cleaning and stuff like that to do, but we can do them right back to back. So we don't have to do them, you know, one after the other. So that right. gets to be a long brew day. Right, right, right. Well, I mean, you're brewing. What was the batch you're just brewing? Oh, uh, which one? <laughs> uh, the, 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 one the, the one where you had to chew on the corn and, and spit it into a... Oh, bucket. that's uh, that's the chicha. Yeah. That's the chicha. That's that's one of the ones we're going to have ready for uh, later this month. Chew Perfect. on the corn and yeah, spit it? Yeah. yeah. That, you know, they do in, in Peru. And so, so um, you know, they it was really funny to watch these guys. They're, they're sitting around, you know, um, eat, you know, chewing on the corn and spitting it into a bucket. And they're, you know, convinced that it's going to ferment and they're going to uh, to have people actually drink it. But uh, uh -huh. yeah, well, the, the whole the whole principle is it's just you're using uh, the amylase. Um, uh, you're your. What you call it? These senior moments are getting worse and worse oh, as I go along. Oh, senior! <laughs> it's your, it's your, it's your, uh, it's what you want you to call it. It's not acid. It's uh, enzymes. En your amylase enzymes. enzymes. Yeah, that's what breaks down the starches and converts it into sugar, and that's how they right. do it. So, but what I, I told him, no, I says there's no possible way I'm going to be chewing on corn and spitting it into it and then fermenting and then asking yeah. people to drink it. That's just yeah. not going to happen. <laughs> Well, too bad so we, we picked up online here. I would uh, bring a bottle of it back to him and tell him how it was made after he had it. Yeah, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you want to mess with somebody's head, you can do that. Yeah, but yeah. 
say, yeah. hey, this is a um, genuine chicha. After, after you drink it, uh, take a look at how it's made. And, and yeah, it. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's like those yeah, coffee beans. after they of, drink it. Yeah, it's like yeah. those coffee beans that you eat or you, you make coffee of after it's been digested through a monkey's butt or something like oh, that. Oh, God, yeah. yes. Uh, I've the heard civet. That. The yeah. civet. Yeah. The civet. It's Ugh. a cat-like, cat-like animal. <laughs> that's, so That's disgusting. You know, we got somebody else here that uh, actually works in a brewery and then also lives with a brewer. Hey, uh, good morning, Charmy. Good morning. So uh, how's how's things in rainy Tampa? Oh, it, it's good. Uh, you know, it's uh, we've got a couple nice beers on tap here, too. We just tapped our grisette. So, um, you know, as my husband continues to homebrew, my house is shrinking and the brewery is growing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can hear the slight hum behind my head, but we now have a commercial reaching cooler to display all of the beers and store mm-hmm. hops. Um, yeah, so, you know. We, I'll, I'll find my space. My home office is right in the brewery at this point. So that's great. Yeah. And, you know, it was, it was funny when you mentioned um, the systems backup that uh, rang a bell with me because um, I had a, a, a systems backup uh, come up about what was it, Russ? Probably almost 10 years ago. That was my foray into the craft brewing industry. A uh, little local brewery here. I'd been in, going to them a couple, you know, for the t- tours and tastings and things and said to myself, I'm going to work here one day. I'm going to run this place and had befriended the owners. And then one day I got this call, Charmy, what do you know about QuickBooks? Oh, I know QuickBooks. I'd written an invoice in QuickBooks once, so I knew QuickBooks, right? And he goes, <laughs> well, yeah, you know, <laughs> sure, I know QuickBooks, why not? Yeah. Um, I, I, uh, I crashed my system. My computers died. And we've lost everything. So two years, you know, two years in the making and everything that they'd done was gone. So I said, I, I've got you covered. <laughs> I can take the job. I'll help rebuild that system to, uh, for you. And so that was actually how I started in this industry. Wow, that's crazy. That's yeah. crazy. You know, yeah. they say if you're backup uh, in your computer in the same place, you have no backup. Yeah. 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 And this, you know, that was again, 10 years ago, the cloud cloud was, you know, just a new concept. But at the time that was a, you know, are we saving anything at all? Yeah, sure. Right. My C drive, it's all right. right there. Can you get it back? So, <laughs> C drive. so, so um, when you're sharing with us now, that's where you started in brewery, but that's yeah. not what you do now. No, I, uh, now I work for a collective of breweries, seven breweries, uh, the name of the company is Canarchy. And um, so I run logistics for all seven locations. And um, yeah, you know, you say it's logistics, but it's process improvement. You know, when you take seven individual businesses and you blend them all together, there's a lot of uh, uh, things that happen. You know, we first, uh, two years ago, it was let's combine or consolidate our database. You know, let's let's all at least be working in the same systems, which is great. the project we just uh, completed, well, I'll say we completed, we're now live. We decided we needed a, a better ordering mechanism for our wholesalers. And so the past six months, we've been doing this integration project from the uh, d- distributor beer ordering portal into our system. So that just went live on Monday. So yeah, a lot happening. Cool. Now, um, you not only do you have uh, uh, to deal with beer at work, you're dealing with it at home too. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm up into up to my ears and beer. <laughs> How many batches does your uh, your husband make? Um, we've so we've got uh, taps for three. So right now there's the grisette. We have a an anchor steam style beer, and then a um, Christmas stout. Christmas stout. It's yes. almost Easter. You know that's a. <laughs> You gotta yeah, finish that. Of, we gotta of, kill that one off. Yeah, so lots of you know cherries, coffee, all of that yeah. stuff, and then we also have a uh, not in not in the kegerator, but to the side, we also have a hard seltzer or boozy water, right? Because sometimes you get sick of drinking beer, so gotta keep up with the times. Yeah. We have a little bit of everything. <laughs> yeah, we got a we got a steam beer that we've done. Uh, we took actually the last competition we put that in, and we took second place with that one. Right. That was that's that's a really good beer. Yeah, yeah. The col- the color on that one is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you've uh, are Don. You're keeping a log of the various recipes that you're doing 
in the results, correct? But yes. if I'm not mistaken, you're saying that most of your beers are coming out a little hot, uh, you know, higher alcohol content than anticipated? Yeah, our, our gravities, we, we, for some reason, we always go, our um, efficiency seems to be way higher than um, what we are planning on them being, what the recipes are coming out. So we're trying to figure out, you know, why is that? And um, it, it seems that mine usually end up higher than what his, my son's does. Uh-huh. So we just, we got to figure out, sit down and, you know, go over what we're doing and you know, get on the same page one way or the other. And if we don't have to have it, if our efficiencies are that actually that high, which is you're looking at in between 80, probably about 82 to 85%, which is really high. Um, if we can do that, you cut down the amount of grain that you're using. Okay. So um, you have what, five or six on tap right now? Seven. Seven. You have seven. Oh, that's right. You have some in the the uh, refrigerator. Yeah, there's two in the other refrigerator, yeah, yeah, yeah. and we I got five in the we got five in the keyser. Okay. And then we have in the fermenters. We got there's a dry Irish stout. We have a we got the chicha. Right. We have. Oh boy, I can't see. I can't even remember. <laughs> we got an Irish red. We got an Irish red. Um, there's two others, and I can't remember what they are. Well, I'll have to stop by this afternoon and uh, and sample those other two. Are you going to be down at the shop? I'm here now. All right. I'll bring down some cigars, too. Beautiful. (laughs) It's a beautiful thing. So, you know, the only beers that I'm not a big fan of that you make are those little, you know, froofy beers. You know what I mean? The ones that are got like too sweet for me. I, I just don't like the sweet beers. We've done well. It, it depends. Well, it depends. Like if, if we do the fruit beers, um, the fruit beers we've done have been really popular. Uh, the the way that we do them, uh, we have a we have a basically we have a wheat a wheat beer recipe, and we, that's just it's our base recipe. We use it on everything that we do that we put fruit in. Right. Um, and then once it's once it's fermented out, we cold crash it, and then rack it into another fermenter and put it on top of the fruit. But we don't. Um, we don't ferment out the fruit. We leave okay. the fruit in there. So, and that's, we, they're, they're real popular. So People love them. The, the uh, rose infused uh, Hellas. Okay. Which mm-hmm. by the way, I actually liked that uh, quite a bit. It was quite tasty. Um, what, what is that? Just sort of like, um, like a, a rose extract that you just, you know, drip into it. Yeah. Yeah. He, we got a rose, we got some rose extract and he just experimented with it as he was going in. We put it in, stirred it up a little bit, tasted it and, you know, it got to the point where he was happy and we left it where, where it was. Very <laughs> cool. Yeah. The, it, you know, it was a nice hint. You know what I mean? It wasn't, you, you wouldn't taste it and say, oh man, that, that tastes like rose. You know what I mean? It tastes like beer, but mm-hmm. the, uh, the rose comes out through the nose, uh, so to speak. Uh, yeah it's, it's quite nice it's quite nice i i'm really upset that i didn't get to taste the gummy bear beer though that, that really <laughs> that really upset me I mean, I, that, I really that was another popular one that was yeah. that one was real popular uh yeah. that was sporting nine percent alcohol that was uh that was up there oh my god but we had a uh the barley one, wine yeah the barley wine that's uh i got one in bottles right now that's ten and a half percent it's really good it's really good um, the other one that we did, it was really popular and, you know, and I, 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 cause we've been looking at doing lower gravity beer stuff that's not as alcoholic. So I says, well, let's do a ginger beer. And basically I just took like seven pounds of grain and put a little bit of specialty malt in it. That was it. Only a quarter pound of specialty malt. And I put a pound of, uh, um, ginger about 10 minutes. I, I only boiled it for 10 minutes. So as soon as it came up to boil, I threw that in there for 10 minutes, cooled it down racked it off it, it, we went through five gallons of that within a week wow, wow. yeah people That's... people people were coming back with growlers to grab it no kidding no yeah because we had a quality control meeting and people took growlers then and then they came <laughs> back and grabbed more so it's the so, quality control meeting like the marketing meeting it's a tempered talk. marketing meeting <laughs> okay. we, we don't we don't we don't it's it's that's it's open to everybody Okay. And not like the marketing meeting. Marketing meeting is a male only thing, and that's there's kind of no hold or yeah, the yeah, the marketing meeting, there's no holds barred on that one. That's yeah. right. Well, nobody yeah. talks about the marketing meeting. That's right. That's right. That's you're so not right. supposed to talk I, about the marketing I meeting. Even, I can't even believe you guys are talking about it now. I mean, this is <laughs> that's right. you know, yeah, you're not supposed to be doing world, that, Dave. The entire See, world I, now is now gonna I know sneaked about the you. Meeting. I sneaked yeah. you on that. <laughs> 
Yeah, hopefully soon it'll be uh, open air, uh, you know, um, instead of in the paint booth. <laughs> uh, yeah, getting out on a loading dock would be nice. Yeah. That's, you know, getting out in the sunshine and get some warmth. Speaking of sunshine, I have to go down to Florida in a couple of weeks. Uh, I have to make a detour on this trip. And Dave, uh, you've been traveling quite a bit. What is uh, domestic travel like? I mean, you know, international travel, the planes are lightly loaded. Um, uh, no, packed. 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 Yeah, yeah, packed. So the whole uh, United, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's because I'm, I'm 1K, it's, I, I get upgraded most of the time, but there's times where even, you know, I'm not able to upgrade. The planes themselves are fairly full uh, on certain routes. I mean, right now, uh, the fares in and out of Salt Lake City, which is where I'm going, are high because it's ski season. And I mean, uh, yeah. the planes are packed. Um, I could go through Chicago, uh, you know, the lower cost fares were, you know, inconvenient and long layover so anything that was going to be efficient is is tight but so uh planes are packed uh there's a couple of the airlines that are still uh only doing two-thirds load instead of full load but united can't afford to do that Uh, i don't think americans i think americans doing full load but uh from what i understand from one of my fellow travelers uh uh, uh, Delta is only doing two thirds load and, and the same with, uh, uh, Southwest. Um, yeah, you got to wear masks and no, no beverages. And on United, they say that you can't drink your own liquor. So you can't sneak, you know, you can't sneak your own, own, uh, beverages, adult beverages on board, uh, and get away with it. Um, I get away with uh, that on the uh, flights over here to the, to the U S I always get a little bit of brandy, uh, to help me fall asleep. Yeah. I I would, I would venture on the international flights. It's not a big deal. It's, I guess, uh, U S regs, you know, you can't bring your own. Um, and then, uh, what's also interesting to me is, is that, um, uh, yeah, everybody masks up, everybody's fairly compliant, but you still get people who, uh, they are very demanding of their social distance, yeah. but not very respectful of other people's social distance. And so, uh, you know, the kids call them Karens. Uh, I had a experience coming back from Salt Lake City where, uh, you know, getting ready to go through the security magnetometer to see if I was going to sneak a weapon on board. And, and, the TSA agent said, hang on just a moment. And then this woman back, you know, ran into the back of me and then I got told to back up. And so I started to back up. She started to rant and rave at me about invading her space. And that's when I said, well, you're the one who walked into my ass. (laughs) I I kind of shut her up. Um, But uh, yeah, you know, uh, it, when I first started traveling in August, Very little would be open up at the airport, but more and more, it's like Denver in the past month, month and a half, a lot more of the restaurants have opened up. Right. Uh, And you have several of them have opened up uh, just in the past month. Right. uh, As more people are traveling through uh, at least United's hubs. Uh, That's what I've seen. Yeah. Well, Terminal C at, uh, at Newark is, is fully open. Um, and, uh, and so I'm going to try to go down to Florida on Saturday. I think, I think there'll be less traveling, you know, less travelers, you know, as opposed to a, a Friday or a, a, a Sunday. Um, so I'm going to go down on a Saturday, uh, you know, have my moment in the sun. Cause I haven't really seen it too awful much since, <laughs> since November. Um, you know, it was, it was sad in Germany. I mean, in Germany, it's, it's complete lockdown. All right. Uh, they're just now opening up and, you know, the restaurants were takeout only, of course, but all the shops have been closed. If you have a plumbing problem, you have to call somebody to fix it because there's no home depot or anything like that open. I mean, you, mm-hmm. I mean that you're really, and they've also made illegal uh, or verboten uh, violation drinking alcohol out in public. All right. Which, you know, in Germany is all the rage. I mean, everybody does it. Oh so, my God. So 
<laughs> the week before I came here, the weekend before I came here, it actually turned sunny and warm. And uh, my two boys are, were there and, uh, and we took our bikes and we rode down to the river uh, to a park. And, uh, and I put three uh, 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 you know, half liter uh, cans of beer in the backpack. And we sat down near the river and we each had uh, a beer. All right. And remember the scene from the Shawshank Redemption where they're sitting there having the beer on the roof? Yeah. I know that feeling now. We felt like free men. You know what I mean? You're such <laughs> a rebel, Joe. I, it was like, you know, we we're sitting there drinking our beers and and people were walking by looking at us because, you know, Germans are all about following the rules uh, and we were breaking them because, you know, we are the, those people. Right. Um, but you know what? It, it was it was really, really a nice little outing um, just to be able to be human for a little bit. Uh, and of course, once you get to the States, everybody's human. I mean, you know, they, they go out of their way to make sure everybody knows that they're human. Um, oh yeah. 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 And uh, even, even in New York, uh, I don't understand why you have to order uh, five wings with a beer in order, or you can't just have a beer at a restaurant. You have to order some food, but that's our illustrious soon to be ex- governor cuomo uh <laughs> with any luck but uh yeah it's uh yeah so where in florida are you going uh S- sanford stanford uh it's just north and east of orlando yeah um about an hour or so i i guess the guy says and uh you know try to you know sort him out a little bit uh he's got some some challenges you know the challenges uh david they always come down to people Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You know, you have processes, you have technology, you have all this stuff. But at the end of the day, um, you know, it's all about people. And I remember when I was young, my father was was a, a lead engineer at IBM. And he came home once and he was very frustrated and said, you know, what's what's wrong, Pop? And he says, you know, uh, he's, you know, as a manager, if it wasn't for the people problems, management would be easy. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it, yeah, that's that's like a you know a truism, right? If it wasn't for the people problems, management would be easy. How many times have we said that, Charmy? <laughs> Daily, lots, yeah, Hourly? a lot, yeah. <laughs> Every yeah. fifteen seconds, yeah. you know, in some yeah. some jobs, yeah, yeah. I'm so thankful Super. I don't have that problem anymore. <laughs> That's right. You're right? you're you're a manager without any any direct reports. No direct reports. It is a beautiful thing. <laughs> <laughs> so you might have another I'd... guest here. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. We yeah, we can. Hey, All Esther. Right. How are you? I'm good. I don't have this American accent, though. I kind of pretend, but I don't have it. Well, that's so, okay. You can you have to guess where I'm from then. <laughs> from which planet in the galaxy? From and which planet like, in the galaxy? Or yeah. I, I would say on this planet. Yeah. Oh, you think? Okay. Maybe yeah. you think so. Maybe my DNA is not from here. You know, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> and I also like to break the rules like Joseph. So uh, you know, I'm a bit of an odd one out. I don't like following. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you fit in right here at the outliers inn. Yeah. That's good. I'm just missing my beer, though. I don't know what type of beer. After all this choice, I've been you guys been talking about. I'm still undecided. But um, yes, I've been living in many countries with loads of beers, so it's so, nice to hear different types of beers you also have on that side of the so, pond. Well, you know, in Germany they restricted basically the four ingredients. You know, the uh, the purity German you know beer purity laws. Um, right. There's a couple of rebels, but not not very many at all. So where where in the world are you uh, today, uh, Esther? I am based right now in Sweden, in Malmo. It is a city like the third biggest city in Sweden, but it's only like three hundred thousand people. So you can imagine this is, feels like a little village in yeah. the, in the south of Sweden, and we are right next to Copenhagen. Copenhagen, everybody knows Copenhagen. Okay. Yeah. So everybody so, comes from Denmark over to uh, Sweden to get their alcohol, if I'm not mistaken. Is that the... The other way around. The other way around? Okay. I knew, I yeah. knew there was a... Well, that's why they <laughs> built the bridge, right? That's, that's why they I, built the yeah. bridge. Well, I hope not only for that reason, but yes, that's <laughs> a possibility. And also here, uh, 
the, 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 the alcohol in Denmark is cheaper and uh, it's somehow closer to Germany as well because you have just, you know, the land is close right. to... I mean, you have still a ferry. You can travel to, to Germany in five hours or, of course, fly or take a train from Sweden. Still, Denmark is definitely closer to, 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 to Germany where Joseph is living now. Yeah, yeah. So, and, uh, so what are you doing up yeah. there in uh, Sweden? Uh, what am I doing here? I, I'm just kind of like, I got stranded here because of COVID. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying a new uh, experience. Um, I was like, you know, sometimes in life, you, you think you, everything is going accordingly to what you want to do. But sometimes it's better to be like water, like Bruce Lee was saying, just be like water. And that's what I'm practicing now. I'm just flowing with the situation in the world and uh, enjoying being back to Sweden because I used to be based in the UK. And, um, and before that, I was living in Sweden. So I thought, well, you know, I'm coming back to Sweden. And I stayed here in the summer and it was so beautiful. And then I thought, yeah, you know, going back to the UK, my instinct said, no, 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 don't do it. And I was right because now the UK is not a very nice place to be because of the restrictions. Right. It's one of the worst, the, I think it's the second worst country in Europe uh, with the restrictions right now. And then it's Brexit as well, right. hitting all, all the fans, uh, as you can imagine. Right. Everything is going, uh, it's a big chaos, uh, even though they don't really show it as a chaos because they think everything is fine and they're all under control. I mean, the negotiations went until the end of last year. I mean, it was a very last minute thing. So it's been very chaotic to live in the UK for the last four years since we started this Brexit thing, 2016. Yeah. So, so and what, yeah. So, so if the UK is the second worst, what's the first worst? I, I, I need to find out actually. I didn't, <laughs> um, I didn't find out. I mean, I was just, I was just concerned about the UK. Yeah. Because I have, uh, my sister is there. And uh, I mean, Spain is actually not that bad right now. Uh -huh. And maybe it's Germany. I don't know. Or France. I, I need to find out, actually. I don't know. Well, I saw yesterday that um, Germany extended the lockdown to like the 28th of March. I mean, this is a, the thing that really bugs the living bejesus out of me, is they keep on yeah. moving the gold goalposts. You know mm -hmm. I mean? They do. It, it's they like, do. You know, it's supposed to be, um, you know, and the uh, the first week of January after Christmas, you know, we just locked down for Christmas, and then it was oh the end of yeah. January, and then it was oh like the middle of February, and uh, you know okay the the beginning of March, and and how would you how would you call that in management in a management type of uh, uh, theory? What kind of management style is this? That, the, oh, the way they manage. That's, that's the uh, Fubar uh, management methodology. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Fubar, yeah. Yeah, fu Fubar, the fucked up beyond all recognition. Ah, I love it. <laughs> fucked up beyond what recognition? <laughs> all recognition, yeah. So yeah, yeah it's I nice. mean it's it's and of course they say now March twenty eighth, mm. which is the week before Easter. So I'll guarantee you they're going to extend it yet again to the middle of of April. Oh, of course. You know. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So we know. We, must, it. we, we know. Must it. We must crush Easter. Yeah, because you know, <laughs> the thing is, you know, they just eke it out an extra two weeks, an extra two weeks, an extra two weeks, and you know, it's sort of like the carrot in front of the uh, of the donkey. You know, you just keep on following it, thinking that you're going to catch this carrot someday, and uh, and and no. But I think there's going to be there's got to be a tipping point where people say enough's uh, enough. Um, well, I hope so. I yeah. hope you're right. I, I, I would be surprised, though, if I see that. I mean, maybe it might happen in certain countries. But I have to tell you, in some countries, everybody likes to, even though it's, it's kind of hard to follow all these restrictions, a lot of people are just, you, you know, there is resignation and they just say, OK, it's because of this. And, you know, we have not never experienced in our, in our lifetime anything like this. So people are saying, OK, well, you see what happens. And obviously nobody knows. Right, right. So I hope you're right, but maybe a lot of people are thinking, well, you know, maybe yeah. we just need to respect this and wait and see. Well, that, uh, Americans are not like that. You know, one by one. I think, I think uh, Texas, the big, great state of Texas, just opened itself up, said 100%. Yeah. Yes. Uh, 
Um, Florida has been that way for a while. Uh, South Dakota, Iowa for a while. I even saw that Connecticut, a, 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 a progressive blue state, uh, is now opening up um, of all places. Wonderful. So, I have a lot of faith the U.S. will lead a new creation of uh, a better planet, like where people are. Because there is a lot of issues happening in the U.S. And I think that's a good, it's, it's like all the crap has to come out before all the good things are going to come. And I think yeah. the U.S. is leading this. Yeah. And I, I really like uh, that what is happening in some ways because there is a lot of things going on and confusion, but the Americans are so much, you know, going for it. They're not like in other countries, you know, really uh, like, you know, it's like when you get sick and you're thinking, oh, it's terrible. I don't feel good. I don't want to do anything. The Americans are okay. I am sick, but I'm going to go through it. <laughs> and I'm going to... Uh, and talk about it and do something about it. And I really like that about America. They are very upfront and I, I really like that. That's unusual to hear, actually, you know, from a, from a European. Um, now, Stockholm and, and Sweden in general never really had a lockdown, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? Uh, that's right. But um, still, people um, are very even. I would say Swedish people have even more... Um, they like to follow even more than the Germans, uh, the government. And uh, I would say they're even tougher in that sense. The Germans, you will find still a lot of alternative groups in Germany. Maybe you're, you're living more in the West. and the East, you have more alternative groups in the South as well. But in Sweden, it's a very homogeneous country. So it's very difficult to find people that think differently. So even though there's n never been a lockdown here still, a lot of people are following the recommendations of the government. Okay. And uh, so people are not wearing the masks. However, uh, they started to enforce the masks in uh, the trains or the buses if there were many people. But still, because they, they have recommended, it's very nice. You don't have to put it on. It's only when you travel to Denmark that you have to put it on uh, the mask. I, I was traveling last summer. And it was so strange because we were in the train, the same train, the same passengers going from Malmo to Copenhagen and half away through the Oresund Sea, like, you know, in the bridge between Denmark and, and Sweden, everybody had to put the, the, uh, the mask on, which was <laughs> weird. It's like, what is this? It's just we're just crossing the sea and now we have to put the masks on right in the middle of the right. sea. Right. I mean, the, the virus uh, only only uh, affects the train halfway. <laughs> absolutely, and the virus the viruses are following also the um, the divisions which, between countries, the frontiers. So how do they know the viruses? Now we have to protect ourselves, and before we don't have to protect ourselves. So it's a lot of nonsense, really, between uh, between these borders. Uh, I would say some countries are like this, some countries are like that. And um, I would say that I feel I also that was the big decision for me to stay here in Sweden, that I don't have to to wear the masks because I know I work in health and I know that wearing a mask all the time can create, uh, uh, as, you know, you can get out of breath and that can create your lungs will get weaker. Also, a lot of these masks are full of chemicals. So if you are breathing all that mask all the time. Uh, you're inhaling a lot of this toxicity inside your lungs, which are very sensitive. And also, uh, they don't really protect against the viruses. So all this nonsense about putting the masks and then also putting two or three or four masks on is just a big <laughs> comedy that is going on. I would say, you know, people here in Sweden say just keep the distance. That's definitely better. Keep the distance and uh, respect that. And uh, don't put any masks on because it's it can it can create um, a lack of oxygen in your body, and that can be have very bad consequences in your brain and, and your and your organs. So just be a, be mindful of that. No uh, masks. Yeah, I thought you know five or six masks uh, you have to to wear now. I mean, I think that's uh, no, <laughs> and and even half dozen. You put a, you know, put a it, plastic bag around your head. Exactly. Now you'll get coached. Uh, you'll get coached on the U.S. airlines about uh, how you need to keep your mask on, and then they bring around you know the little snack bag that has the bottle of water and the little uh, bag of uh, six uh, pretzels and uh, the the strumpf waffle. 
whatever that oh, thing is. I can't eat. No. I can't. I can't eat those things. Oh my god, they're great. Oh, I'm oh gonna I give you one. My yeah. You know, every once in a while, I'll see them at the grocery store, and it's like I can't eat those things at one. I I'll eat the whole package. I'll gain like twelve pounds uh, at a sitting. Um, they're, great. they're off my. They're off my. They're off my diet. So, yeah, stoop, stoop uh, but uh, yeah. So you're supposed to. You're supposed to. You know, you have your mask on, and then you're supposed to just and to have a sip and then put your mask back on. And they actually, on one of my flights last month, demonstrated that. It was like, do we really need to have this demonstrated? Of course, nobody did that. Uh, everybody, you know, as soon as the beverage cart came around, boom, you know, masks down, people eating, talking to each other. So it was, you know, the, you, you feel more ridiculous about it I, every flight. I, um, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to my flight to Florida now. That'll be interesting because like, there you, you know, go. You know, it's very, uh, the flights across the, the pond, um, you know, if you're, you could stretch out the meal service for like an hour and you don't have to wear the mask. You know what I mean? And of course, then they come around with a second round of drinks. And, and so it's like, you know, 50% of the flight, you don't have the mask on because you're, you're eating and they don't say, you know, put it back on every, you know, between bites. Um, probably because it's not a full flight you know what i mean it's like i'll have a whole bench or be a bench in front of me yeah. a bench behind me uh, you know it's like i said it's only about a third full um uh, but it's a far cry better than a, than it used to be so so uh what do you say uh mule you want to wrap this uh, session up uh, thank our guests for participating and sharing their wisdom uh, esther uh great to have we you talked about us. beer we talked about crazy people wow. uh, you know yeah. So it was great to have. Thanks, some, uh, Esther, for faces. joining us. Yeah. You're welcome. Oh, the Vasalit in Swedish. And uh, yeah, I hope to join you next time. And um, it's, it feels nice to talk to you guys because when I was in the US, I felt really home. I really like the way American people interact. It's so relaxed, it's so natural. And when I'm in here in, 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 in Europe, even in, in in some southern countries, it's not the same anymore. People are just like, uh, they are more, um, it's becoming very, very odd to communicate with people. And when I'm in the US, everything is so easy and everybody looks at people's eyes and it's nice. I, I really enjoy this conversation. It feels like uh, I, I, am, I am back home in some ways. Well, super well, once, uh, you guys. Yeah. once restrictions are, are lifted, we'll have to invite you on over. Well, oh yes, that, that, definitely, yeah, definitely. It's Come just easy, just, just, yeah. just to yeah hitchhike all the way down to the south. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. All right. Well, and I, then I, thanks again for joining us, Charmy. Really appreciate having uh, hearing about your uh, foray and how you got into uh, the craft brewing business. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it. And Don, always a pleasure to get to hear. Uh, get to hear the latest flavor on tap. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I got to check the Belgian IPA when I get done. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll see you in 20 minutes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Bring food. Oh, food. Well, well, I'll see you in 25 well, minutes. Then. I don't know what <laughs> well, All folks, right, you've thanks. wasted another hour here. Uh, here at the outliers Inn. it's been a pleasure, Joe, once again, to, get to chew the fat a little bit absolutely mule it was uh, really great uh, seeing you and having this chat and working through some of our technology issues which seem to be plaguing us this uh, this episode but uh, yeah i thought it was yeah. a lot of fun uh, always great to see you and in uh, chat with you so i guess there's only one thing left to say don't well, drive just... like my brother and don't drive like my brother take care take care been listening to another episode of the outliers in with your hosts joseph paris and david schneider 
This program is produced by the Operational Action Society and sponsored by Zonotech Consulting Group International.